This is the camera. It comes in this nifty brown leather case, and I've had it since the 1980s. It is, of course, the SX-70 Polaroid. Of course, the SX-70 is a legendary camera from the late 1960s, designed by Edwin Land, and I've had this since the 1980s. I've shot a lot of the original style Polaroid film in this camera and in fact I have one of the original film cartridges which has the flat battery pack with the two contacts that actually powers the camera. So you push this little yellow button here, the door pops down, you put the film cartridge in and when you close it it recycles the camera. It normally would eject the dark slide if there was a dark slide. And then because this is an auto exposure camera uh, when I push the button, it's going to do a timed exposure because the rest of the studio is kind of dark. So a multi-seconds long exposure. There is a focus adjustment above the shutter button on the right, and there is a, a, an exposure adjustment on the left, and there is a slot connector on the top for the flash cube bar. So this is a really great... Um, instant camera that I would love to start using again, but of course the original Polaroid film for the XX70 isn't made anymore, and what was the Impossible Project, who took over a closed down Polaroid factory, they ended up buying out the intellectual property to the name Polaroid, and now Polaroid film is being made once again for the SX70, but it isn't the same ISO speed as the original SX-70 film, so I need to get this camera modified. And it just so happens that my friend Ethan Moses here in Albuquerque has another friend in Albuquerque who has a business of converting SX-70 cameras for the new style Polaroid film. Maybe in a few weeks or in a, even a few months or whatever, maybe I'll have a usable SX-70 for the modern Polaroid film. So, I have this camera. Uh, it was in really good shape, by the way, because he, when he did the conversion, he also checked out the optics, the cleanliness of it. There's a window that covers the meter, the light meter, and everything was in really excellent shape. So, anyways, this camera is ready to receive some of this new Type 600 film, which I've never used this new kind of Polaroid film, and I understand that it takes a little bit longer to develop than the historic Polaroid film or the new Fuji Instax instant film, and I also understand that it might be a little bit light sensitive, or that is you might need to hide it from direct light while it's developing, and also it's rather sensitive to the temperature, so if it's really cold weather, it takes longer to develop. Of course, it's the summertime, we shouldn't have to worry about that. Anyways, all that to say that I'm going to uh, take this camera out side and let's do some test shots with the Polaroid SX-70 converted to take the new Type 600 film. Okay, welcome to Joe's backyard. Here is one of the packs of film. All right. Looks like a Pop-Tart, but it's not a Pop-Tart. Okay. Isn't that cool? There's a little button on the side to drop the film door down and it goes right inside like that. Dark slide. I've never used this camera before, at least it's been decades since I've used it, so I'm going to look for some kind of a landscapey like image around my backyard here and let's shoot it and you know, let's see what results we get, right? Well, so one of my first shots might be this flower. So, let's see, where's my focus? Exposure, I'll keep in the middle. My focus is right here. It is an SLR, so minimal focal distance is like about right here. Okay, I'm gonna shield this print from the light by putting it in my pocket, and we'll wait a few minutes and see how it comes out. This little sun face 
on the back wall of my yard I think would be kind of a cool little subject matter hopefully I'm just keeping the exposure dial in the center right so here we go try to uh, focus in put it in my pocket and we'll see what we get okay so I'm gonna get my wife to take a picture of me all right, I'm going to take the print out immediately and put it in my pocket, and we will see what we get. Thank you. Sure. That was easy, huh? Well, I'm going to let those pictures uh, fully develop before I uh, take a look at them. We might want to do some exposure adjustments, of course. But uh, anyways, I certainly remember how cool now the SX-70 was as a camera. The way it opens, you know, it's just sort of very unique. Uh, with the mirror, the front surface mirror, and having a manual focus adjustment, right, and exposure adjustment. I should mention that uh, one of the photographers whose work that I follow online is Chris Crawford. Christopher Crawford is a photographer who spent a couple years here in New Mexico, but he lives back in Indiana. And uh, recently, he's been showcasing his work on Rangefinder Forum. He's been using an SX-70 camera with the new film, and he's been really having some good results doing like urban documentation with it. And it looks like he's figured out how to dial in the exposures. Uh, it looks like what he does is he adjusts the exposure manually so he doesn't blow the highlights. He's sort of like slightly underexposing or at least figuring out how to get an exposure that's good within the narrow uh, dynamic range of the film. So that's kind of interesting and I hope to learn a little bit from him. Well, let's look at our results, shall we? Okay, this is my very first shot with this camera using the new film. This was the close-up. This was minimal focus distance. And, uh, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, focus looks pretty good around the middle here. The focus falls off nicely as you would expect with a uh, narrow depth of focus kind of shot. I thought the exposure was pretty decent overall. Uh, the highlights really are the bright green leaves up here and the petals on the flower and they look pretty decently exposed. Nothing is really blown out on this shot so surprisingly good actually. Okay the next shot here is a challenge in terms of dynamic range because you have of course the brightly lit sundial face and then you have the deep shadows what I do like though is I can see some of the detail in the shadowed part of the sundial face and uh, the bright brickwork and the highlights on the ceramic is really not that bad uh, surprisingly good so it actually handled the dynamic range quite well another little aspect of this I kinda like is in the distance you can see the house behind me you can see its roof line and the little like a ventilator pipe or something like that it, out of focus but you can still see that in the distance which is kind of interesting it really has a neat effect this is some kind of a narrow depth of focus effect you don't or selective focus effect that you don't see on the most of the Fuji Instax cameras the uh, portrait that my wife took of me, now of course she was standing so that the apparently the sun was striking the lens of the camera. So that's what all this greenish yellow flare is, is, to the, is sunlight hitting the camera. And then you can see the reflection of the sky behind the camera in the window here behind me and but she focused good on my face actually I'm nicely focused and the exposure is pretty decent uh, my shirt is a little dark but it's really compensating for the exposure the bright sky up here through the clear story windows in in my patio room really not a bad shot considering how bad the lighting was uh, flare from sunlight hitting the lens I did make a fourth exposure in the backyard uh, that you didn't see on the video. This is my grandson Noah. He's standing under the shade of a tree and behind him to the upper left is the sky so it's sort of brightly backlit and I knew the camera's exposure system would try to compensate for this backlighting by reducing the exposure overall so I did dial up the exposure on the camera by a couple notches and I thought the exposure came out really nice so it is 
pretty nicely sharp and there's a little bit of kind of yellowish color on his cheek and that's coming from the filtered light through the leaves of the tree is green colored so it's giving that kind of a yellow cast to his skin and then because of this backlighting of daylight there's a little bit of blue on the brim of his hat and on his shoulders. Overall though I thought this was a pretty decent shot and this is kind of indicative of why the SX-70 Polaroids were so good back in the day for taking portraits. This is just a classic example of what kind of fun you can have with the camera and film for doing these candid type of portraits. I was very surprised at how well this new Type 600 Polaroid film worked on this converted SX-70. As I said earlier, I had heard a lot of things bad about the original Impossible Project and the later Polaroid Originals film, and they have continuously improved the quality of the film and the formulation over the years. But this Type 600, I gotta say, I'm remarkably impressed. I think the sharpness on some of these is probably better than what I'm getting with Fuji Instax Wide. Certainly this shot of the little sun face on my back wall, the texture of the stucco or the brickwork on the wall is sharper than what I've seen on Fuji Instax and you could expect it to be in theory certainly because the optics of the SX-70 are so good and it's manual focusing, it's a SLR, you're looking through the taking lens, you can see the focusing, it's a rangefinder focuser in the sense that you have a central focusing patch with a split image prism. But what really surprised me actually was the colors and the dynamic range. I didn't see the blown highlights and so I think the metering on the on the camera, certainly the metering that uh, Jeremy did, uh, the adjustment to the metering system for the new film, worked really well. And yeah, I'm really impressed by this. Now, as for the cost of the Polaroid 600 film compared to, let's say, Fuji Instax Wide, these are about twice as expensive as a Fuji Instax Wide print. These are about $2 a print versus Fuji, which is about a dollar a print. This is on Amazon when you get a pack of five boxes in one package. So it is double the cost, and you have to consider that. Now, of course, these are square uh, format pictures, so Fuji does make a square format uh, Instax that are quite a bit smaller than this, actually. So that's one thing you have to consider is the size of the print you're getting. And also, when you're using it with a camera like the uh, SX-70, it is an uh, adjustable focus through the lens viewfinder, manual exposure control, auto exposure otherwise camera. So you're getting quite a bit more capability of a camera than you would with a simple Fuji Instax point-and-shoot camera. And, and assuming, of course, you have your old SX-70 converted or you buy one of the new Mint uh, type SX-70 cameras that have been converted. So it is more expensive, but you do get more for your money as well. I think the dynamic range and the sharpness is at least as good as Fuji Instax. Yeah, very impressed with it, surprisingly so, and because I thought this was going to be like, oh, a once-in-a-while thing that I would use it and I would probably revert to using... Instax wide normally if I needed instant film, but these four pictures that I took came out so well that I'm really thinking that I'm going to be shooting this a lot more in the future, so I'm going to be buying more film, and also I believe uh, Mint Camera, if I'm not mistaken, makes an electronic flash unit that pops into the flash bar here, so I can do some actual indoor electronic flash portraits with this camera and film setup. So I'm really excited to get going forward to using this more. I think it was a really great thing to have it converted for the new Type 600 film and I encourage you guys if you happen to have an old Polaroid camera laying around unused maybe consider getting it converted as well and try start using the new Type 600 Polaroid film. I'm impressed, surprisingly so. This is Joe Van Cleve and I encourage you Stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.